Hey guys, welcome to part three of the three part video series, beginner to amateur kayak angler in three videos. I'm excited about this one. I'm gonna be walking you through all three of my fishing kayaks, my Sun Dolphin Aruba 10, my native Slayer Propel 10, and my Bonafide P127. And the reason I'm walking you through these on a beginner series, because one of the number one videos I searched for when I started out kayak fishing was how to modify your fishing kayak. I wanted to one, learn how to be comfortable out in the water because I'm out there for three, four, five, six, sometimes even 12 hours a day. And two, what are some of the tips and tricks that will help me put more bass or fish into my kayak? Not only that, I'm gonna share with you kind of what I have on them, my DIY modifications, my upgrades, my accessories, and how I utilize them to my advantage. As I mentioned in the last video, the goal is to go out kind of bare at the beginning and then come back, do a post-mortem, and then fix a few things and continue to do that and get comfortable adding things over time. Some people are like, you know what? I'm a minimalist, all I need is my PFD a fishing pole and a tackle box and you are good to go. And if that's you, then more power to you. But that's not probably the majority of you out there. So let's go ahead and hop into these fishing kayaks. Here we go. Now we are ready. All right guys, first let's start off with the reason you're here, my Sun Dolphin Aruba 10. Now this is the only paddle kayak that I own and it's pretty minimalist for a reason. So I'm gonna pull this bad boy out whenever I want to go adventure fishing, right? I gotta pull it through the woods for a couple hundred yards. I gotta drag it through grass. My other kayaks are heavier. I think Bear, my native Slayer Propel 10 is around 65 pounds. When you gear it down, you're looking like 90 to 100. My Bonafide P127 with the motor is 130 pounds. When you get that thing all loaded down, 175. With this thing I could pick up, throw it over my shoulder, and take it just about anywhere. So this is why I actually own this particular kayak. It's an adventure kayak, right? It's used for small lakes and ponds, and I've only done a few modifications to this bad boy. Let me walk you through them. All right, one of the modifications I did to this fishing kayak is on the back hatch here. So let me take this off for you. Typically on the back hatch, this would not be cut out like this. I actually did a modification where I cut this out so I can have access for storage way under here. Usually it's a little pocket in here, which I'll show in the video, I think I still have it. But I don't need to put a ton of stuff back there anyways. If it is, it's definitely in a dry bag because all the water from the front, if I get any water in here, it's all splashing toward the back. All right, next let's talk about the paddle. Now, if the only fishing kayak you have is a paddle kayak, that's when I recommend to get a nice lightweight paddle. If anybody ever asked me the question, I'm like, hey, go for carbon fiber, they're gonna be really sturdy. Dirty, they're gonna be super lightweight and that's your only mode of power you're not gonna want something that's super heavy like this but since I don't use this fishing kayak which is kind of a stretch of imagination I kind of turned a recreational kayak into a fishing kayak then I don't buy really expensive paddles I believe this one ocean broad maybe cost me $30 on Amazon but I like it it does a trick it's a little heavy but like I said don't use this very often hey guys this is a modification as well these are PVC's that I modified into kind of fishing rod holders and I just bolt it to the inside of the kayak here so when you take your fishing pole I carry two sometimes make sure it doesn't pop out of there I create a little bungee cord to kind of boom there you go and this way you can have two fishing poles at once you always have one in your hand and you always have one here kind of off to the side or if you just don't want it falling out and you're kind of paddling and don't accidentally hit it this is a great little addition for they're actually really really cheap so I have a video on how to make these I'll throw that video in the description below okay the next modification I have on this is this guy right here now this is an anchor that I have my dad kind of fab me up. He works in a metal shop. And so that's probably a little overkill as far as how heavy it needs to be. But this works really nice. And then what I put it on is a dog leash. So it's retractable, which is nice. And it's also this cloth material, so it won't rust out as easily. And so this will go down maybe 25 feet, which is nice. And then whenever it hits the bottom, I uh, just lock it in right here and it kind of keeps me in place. And then I don't have all this extra cord kind of sitting around the bottom of my kayak. So a nice little mod there. Uh, I also, for the seat on this bad boy, since this is not comfortable at all, uh, I just throw this snap on down and give my butt a little cushion when I'm out on this. Now I've, I've actually fished on this for like six, seven hours. Now it isn't super comfortable because you really can't stand up in this bad boy, which kind of no bueno, but I'd throw my legs out over the side. It makes it kind of as relaxing as it's going to get. And the last mod I did to this, it comes with this little bungee here for a water bottle, but I bought a bungee kit because I wanted to be able to shove jackets and whatever else I wanted to keep under here. I mean, you can kind of shove your paddle under there if you wanted to at an angle. Uh, but these are really cheap. I'll throw the link in the description below if you're modding out a fishing kayak and you want to put some 
bungees on. Now, I didn't put a keel guard on this. I don't care about it that much, as you can see in this video right here. I actually found it in the tributary of the Ohio River and called it into the police. Like, hey, if no one calls this thing in, it's yours. That was like three years ago, so. I know you guys are sad. Say goodbye. My video watch time is going to drop off as soon as I move away from this beauty right here. All right, guys. Now we're on to my native Slayer Propel 10. My first love. My first ever fishing kayak, actually. And I went straight for the pedal drives. I knew I would not like the paddle-driven kayaks. And so I got this on Facebook Marketplace, drove two hours to Pittsburgh, and picked it up for $1,200 like in the middle of winter. Interesting enough, I've never actually bought any of my fishing kayaks MSRP. I either found them in the river or I've purchased them on Facebook Marketplace. So you can actually get really good deals because this new, it's gonna cost you around $2,600 and we'll get to what my bona fide is here in just a little bit. So when I say propel drive, this is a propel motor. It's made by Native, they put it on their bona fides as well, and it is the pedal drive system. There's a variety of different pedal drive systems out there. You have the Hobies that have the fin drive, but what I like about this is that it's instant reverse. Forward, backward, really simple. I actually did a six part series of how to take this thing apart, how to grease it, how to put it back together, some troubleshooting on it, and I answer any questions you have along the way. So if you end up getting into a propel drive system, these things are freaking bulletproof, then know those videos are there if you ever need help with the maintenance. This thing will last you a very long time. All right guys, let's go bow to stern. So I have this guy, this is just a safety tether that I hook to the front of my trailer. So I converted a utility trailer to a double decker kayak trailer. So if you're interested in how I did that, I'll throw that video in the description below. But this is that's for, you open up the bow hatch and this is basically just a tie off. And so it's hooked. So if I ever just need it, if I ever go to the restroom or I need to run it back to my truck, just hook this to something and then my fishing kayak doesn't float away and I have to go swimming for it. So really easy. I also shove a bunch of other things down here. Uh, I know people put transducers in here. I'll also put a first aid kit. This is a DIY first aid kit because I feel like some of the ones that you buy, not only are they expensive, uh, I just believe a lot of them are junk. So I created my own. So if you're interested in my first aid kit for my fishing kayak, I'll throw that video in the description below. I also did an upgrade to the Propel Drive pedals because the old ones, these guys right here, I did not like it. Plastic, they didn't feel good on my feet. So I upgraded to the Zacro aluminum mountain bike pedals and uh, they were really sticky. And so my feet don't slip off of them. So I'll throw the link to these in the description below as well. All right guys, and if you're not a member of KBF Kayak Bass Fishing, I'm a member. I highly recommend going and checking this out in I Fish the Knucklehead Bass Fishing Series. It's a real low cost $15 series where I actually anchor a team when we go down to Lake Gunnersville and fish off against a bunch of of other content creators and their team. So check out KBF if you are not yet a part of this, a great community to be a part of. Now you might be wondering what in the world is this crazy thing? <laughs> this is actually called a Yak Attack Switchblade. So these are used to put your transducer into the water on the side of your fishing kayak, run your fish finder off the side track right here. And then when you're you know loading up or going through some lily pads, you basically pick this up or kind of fold it back so it's not in there anymore and you're good to go. So if you want one of these guys, I will throw the link in the description below. It's kind of how they work. This is the transducer. We would take it off here and basically put this on here. And so you stick that down in the water, actually this way, um, you can get a reading. So let's talk about these gear tracks real fast. So this is gonna be uh, a ram mount. Essentially you stick this on the side, slide it down onto wherever you want it and you tighten it just by turning it to the right. And now you can take your fish finder on a ram mount and stick it on there and then tighten it up. And there you have it folks, fish finder, you would run the power and transducer cables, usually run the power into your bow and run your transducer kind of zip tie it down the bottom and you have yourself a nice little entry level fish finder. All right guys, let's talk about fish finders really fast. I recommend if you're starting out a great entry level fish finder is the Garmin Striker 4, which I ran for years and absolutely loved it. Now, I didn't necessarily buy it to mark fish, right? I bought it to be able to tell me the water temperature, to be able to tell me how fast I am trolling, to be able to tell me the depth, which all was going to inform how I fish that particular part of that lake or pond that I was fishing. And so these are going to run you on Amazon. I think right now, last time I checked around $125, but you're going to need to power it as well. I recommend the Nakwa Pro Battery Kit. And I actually have an install video of how to connect your battery to your Garmin Striker 4. So I'm going to throw that mounting option in the description below of how to get your Garmin Striker 4 attached 
to your kayak and for total of around 250 to $275, you will have a fish finder on your kayak. Now, as you probably already know, electronics can get absolutely bonkers when it comes to price. When you start getting into your panoptics, your live scope, some of those systems will run you $2,500 to $3,000 depending on the screens that you get. And so I will show you one of those bonkers systems when we get over to my bona fide P1 to 27. But let's keep walking through the Native Slayer Propel Test. So if you guys were wondering how this goes down, essentially you lift this up, remove this. Oh look, I got some line in there I need to get out. And then you drop this down, lock it in if you want so it doesn't come back up. I usually leave it open because if you don't, sometimes when you hit something, uh, it'll make your whole kayak move up versus just your motor popping. So when you pedal forward or backwards, I can hear, <laughs> you can hear the line in there. I need to clean that out. <laughs> All right guys, on the top of your propel drive, you actually see a hole up here. You'd be like, oh, what's that for? Well, it's a quarter 20, and you could put a quarter 20 RAM mount on the top of that. Basically, you screw that in. And now you have a variety of options. Uh, I think my favorite option is to take the RAM X-Grip, put that on there, get it how you want it. I usually put it right about there. So put your RAM mount in there, you can slide your phone in there, and then you can really give this thing kind of a beating and it's not gonna fall out. And it's kind of nice to have right there because you get a phone call or a text message or someone's responding to your YouTube video and just kind of nice to have it front and center and it doesn't get in the way of my feet. And so that's kind of a nice attachment on there. I'll put the link for this guy in the description below as well. Another one of my favorite additions to this fishing kayak whenever I first started out and it was my primary is buying this Craftsman Versa Stack. This thing was awesome because I can just reach under pull out this guy and it would have all my terminal tackle and the lures I was going to use that day um, that kind of had set up which is kind of nice because I want to do a lot of my pre-fishing strategy I'll put some of the stuff I want to try out in here and then this makes it really easy to grab a Senko whatever it is that you're using this is a lot of my dad's stuff in here because he primarily uses this and it's kind of my buddy kayak but for like 40 bucks 50 bucks you know, I know Craftsman makes one but also DeWalt makes one as well so I'll throw both of those links in the description below as well now keep in mind if you didn't watch the last video this won't fit under every kayak seat. So do a little research. It fits under my Native Slayer Propel 10, but it does not fit under my Bonafide. So I have to come up with a different option for that. All right, let's move on. All right, over here you see the little side pouch. It's really nice. If you have gear tracks, and this is just kind of wasted space over here. So you can get the knockoff versions. Uh, they have native versions as well that cost like $40, or you can get this for like $12 off Amazon. I'll put both links in the description below. But a great little place to put a lighter. Um, I just hijacked these from my other kayak. I always like to carry a pair of titanium scissors to cut my braid. I leash everything. This right here is actually a DIY leash. I actually made these for about 25 cents. So if you're interested in making some DIY leashes on the cheap, I'll throw that video in the description below. All right, working away around the kayak. This is a cup holder, which is just really easy. I mean, these things are really cheap and it's really nice to have, to have a place to put your drink or soda or coffee or whatever it is. But also I end up putting a lot of my discarded lures. I know you can put them like down here, but then they usually fall off and I end up stepping on them possibly breaking a hook so a lot of throw all that stuff in here when I get back to my house I take them all out and you know clip the ends of the line off the ends of the hooks and kind of organize them again these are really nice really cheap this one's yak hacker I also have yak attack I actually did a video on which one is actually stronger so I'll throw that link in the description below as well but next I have a tethered fish grip Red, white, and blue, baby. And so I use this for a variety of reasons. So what I'll do is whenever I catch a big fish and maybe I'm taking a photo of it and I don't want it flopping in the bottom of my boat, potentially injuring itself, I'll just kind of hook the bottom lip of the fish, snap this in, put him back in the water and let him swim around until I'm ready to bring him back out and take a photo so he can breathe, right, and live longer. So I want to respect the fish out there. And so this is tethered and it's on a bungee. They are not going to get loose from this. And I have one on my other kayak as well. So that kind of stays right there next let's talk about this guy and this guy right here so these are actually 3d printed seat risers from my man over at 3dyak.com now obviously if you're moving your seat up you are elevating your center of gravity which is going to throw your stability off a little bit so keep that in mind if you struggle with your equilibrium and that's a big deal for you and you're really scared about falling in the water then you might not want to get some seat risers but for me i have really great balance i haven't fallen in in years actually i've never fallen in my fishing kayak but i always tell people it's not a matter of if it's just a matter of when especially when you kayak fish 
all the time. So keep that in mind when you're raising your seat a little bit higher. So on this fishing kayak, I don't carry a lot of rods with me. I just utilize the built-in rod holders. And so those are kind of nice, there's two of them. But this, this right here, this is OG native sidekicks. I mean, these guys are old, right? But still work. Pull them out, slide them down, push them back in, and you are good to go on moving your kayak to and from the water. Whenever you get down the water, slide them back up, push them in. Now you don't have to go run back to your truck because they are permanently affixed to your fishing kayak. So I believe the native slide case are gonna cost you around $280 the last time I looked. And they make a bunch of different options out there. My recommendation, if you watch my earlier videos, if you have a kayak under 65 pounds and getting some type of cradle cart may be perfect for you. Here's an example of one, obviously, I have it, but I haven't even opened it yet, but they make some other options as well. This is the double rail cart. So these are gonna be for your beefier fishing kayaks that weigh a lot more. And the thing about the double rail carts is that they're, they're built tough and they will do the trick, right? They'll do the job. But what I don't like about them is simply that you have to like set them up perfectly and get your kayak on and strap it over. And then when you get down to the water, you gotta take it apart and put it in your hatch or run it back to your truck. And it's just a bunch of inconvenience that with an extra 70, $80, you can have something permanently affixed to your fishing kayak. But if you don't have that type of cash and you just wanna get a double rail cart, I'll throw the length of this one, which one I like in the description below. So I will say whenever you're looking at some of these, they're, I believe Groovy, Groovy is another name of these, but I like the native sidekicks with the pneumatic wheels. And so sometimes you see them with plastic wheels, get the ones you can fill up with air. That's gonna take some of that brunt force away from transferring up to these guys because I had a buddy once, he got his plastic wheels caught on a janky boat ramp pulled it up a little bit, and granted, yes, his fishing kayak was heavy, but he ripped the aluminum gear tracks out. Here's a photo of that. And so get some pneumatic wheels, it's gonna take some of that brunt force, and that might not have happened if he didn't have the plastic wheels on. So, little recommendation there. And then my friends, is the native Slayer Propel 10. I skipped the kayak crate and the keel guard. We'll talk about that on my Bonafide P127. But, this was a sweet rig for a couple of years for me. Now let's get to my current rig, the Bonafide P127. All right, Bonafide P127, this is actually a motor mount, but since I don't put a motor on my Bonafide, um, this is up here, I just put a hole through the mount, and this is where I run a camera. So if you ever wonder how I got that shot <laughs> looking at me when I'm landing fish, this is it. And so I actually ran a tether, I actually tethered my GoPros now because I lost one to the bottom of the lake. And that was an expensive mistake, I don't want to learn again. And so I can't show you the camera and stuff on here because I'm actually using it right now to shoot this video. And so uh, I run ram mounts, I'll throw all this stuff. You can kind of see how I ran the tether here. I just ran it underneath that bolt. And I'll throw these tethers as well. You get like six of them for pretty cheap. And next I got this tow rope here. It's a hundred foot polypropylene. It'll float, which is nice. In case you get out on the water and you need someone to tow you back in, this is going to be really nice to have. So you don't have to use your 65 pound braid <laughs> to tow you back. This is actually one of the items on another video that I created. Life-saving gear that should be in your fishing kayak. And I'll throw that video in the description below. And this guy right here is my Nakua Pro battery kit. This is the 10 amp hour. They're a little bit expensive, but they're really nice. Essentially what you do, you just hook it up to the power on your fish finder and boom you are good to go and so that's what you find in here you actually lift this up and there's some more storage back here basically my transducer cord you can throw an extra paddle back there broken down if you want to a lot of option there because because under here runs down the side of the boat nothing new and crazy on the propel drive uh, versus the last one that i shared with you let's talk about Let's talk about this guy right here. These are the Yak Attack Pro Mega Rod Holders, which are really nice. Basically, they clip out and you can lift them up. They're multi-directional and once you put them in, you can lock them in and they won't come out. So you can put your rods in here, they fit in nicely, and you can kind of troll. And when you get a hit, these things aren't gonna, they aren't gonna move out on you. So had these for a couple years, super nice. Next is my Garmin UHD 92 SV. This is the upgraded nine inch uh, fish finder that I have, which I'm pretty excited about. I got the GT56, which might be like blowing your mind right now. Like, what are you even talking about? But just a nice fish finder. It's gonna have side view and down scan, down view for you. And so I have how to install this. I got a video for you, the Echo Map kayak install. So I'll throw that video in the description below. This is a Yak Hacker cup holder, which I really like. These guys got these little rubber things here. It doesn't matter what size cup you have, uh, that's gonna fit into there nicely. And then of course you can see some of my past lures from the past trip. Here's that native pouch, which is nicer, by the way. All right, let's move on. This right here, if you wondered, is what lowers and uh, raises my rudder. It's kind of a 
rudder in the back that goes like this. A lot of stuff to talk about back here. Let's start, ooh, let's start with this guy right here. This guy right here, freaking awesome. The leverage net by Yak Attack. What I love about this is that a lot of the other nets out there won't fold over like this. So instead of having it a low profile, this thing is sticking way up in the air. And so when you're casting, um, there's just more of an opportunity for your hooks and you're gonna get caught up in it. And so that's why I love this leverage net. Obviously, it supports at your forearm. So you got a lot of, you're you know, fighting a fish with your left hand and your pole, and you can easily get down and get that fish with this. And it's also got a rubber net on it, which is nice. And you're not gonna get your trouble hooks caught up in it and spend the next five minutes trying to get them out. So if you're interested in this particular leverage net, this is the one that I recommend and love. And so there's two different sizes on this guy right here. And so I like the narrower one. And so I'll throw that in the description below. If you want the fatter one as well, which I think is kind of overkill in my opinion, I'll throw that link in the description below if that's the one that you want. All right, next let's talk about the Yak Attack boom. So if you ever wonder how people get those over the shoulder shots, this is how they do it. They throw up this aluminum boom by Yak Attack. You attach them with a lock and load kind of system on the bottom, just like you did your Yak Attack Pro Mega rod holders like I showed you earlier. And then this is directional as well. So you clip the clip down here, you kind of do a bunch of different angles. I can move it up, I can move it further away. This is how I do a lot of my on the water videos as well. So there's a couple things happening around here. So let me walk you through it. So this is a quick draw. It attaches to the sea that comes stock, which is really nice. So I just leave my paddle here and it kind of runs off the back and it's out of my way a lot of times. So you take that out. I also have safety whistle. I have a pair of tethered uh, fingernail clippers. A lot of times it's really easy to grab that. Snip some line. And then I have my second pair of fish grips, which is nice. I use these often. So these are a different type of tether. So I'll throw this link to the kind of coil type in the description below. Next, I have a behind the seat backpack. Guys, there's not a lot of real estate on your fishing kayaks. And so I just went and bought a cheap one from Walmart. You can also get, I don't know, I don't know how you say it, mole bags, mole bags or whatever. You can buy on Amazon. I got a link to those as well. And this is just a really nice place to put your keys, your wallet, your rain jacket, an extra jacket for the day, some extra lure, some of your soft plastics, whatever it is, water bottle, I keep some of my extra lures on the side here. Um, it makes it easy to really not have to turn around and get into my kayak crate. Just reach off to my side and grab that. So since this is a beginner video, uh, this probably isn't the greatest mod for you, but in case you're wondering what it was, this is my catch board. So I measure fish for the KBF tournaments, kayak bass fishing tournaments. So this has my identifier card. You measure by inches when you kayak fish for the CPR tournaments, catch, photo, and release. And so this is a double header. Yak Attack makes them, and I believe this one is a Yak Hacker brand. So essentially, this is kind of a hack. This isn't actually what it's made for. This is actually made for a paddle holder, but also works really well with your catch board. You kind of stick it in, and boom, it is good to go. So it makes it really easy to kind of grab off to your left, pull it up, measure your fish, upload it to Fishing Chaos or whatever tournament site that you use, and you're good to go. Also, you see some 3D printed seat risers for the Bonafide P127. They're back here as well. And so I actually work with 3D Yak. These are the first ever 3D printed seat risers for the Bonafide P127. So these are really nice. Greg over there at 3D Yak does a really great job. And right here are the new and improved native sidekicks. So if you buy them now, this is what they look like. And so a little better design on that. You pull this out and you can pull it out and move it up, move it down. Once again, one of my favorite upgrades for a fishing kayak, especially if you're not wet launching your kayak every single time. And one of my favorite mods is this guy right here, the kayak crate with six rod holders. And so if you're interested in making this, I made a couple versions. A couple years ago, I made a 1.0 version and it was good, but I upgraded to the 2.0 version with a variety of different upgrades. Just made with two different milk carts. You open it up and you can fit all your tackle inside. Um, make sure you have all your tools inside. And up here is nice, you can just throw you know, a rain jacket or whatever it is. It makes it really, really easy to kind of grab under here, pull it out. And then when you flip it out, it's not gonna fall off the back of your kayak. A couple other options up here, you can stick stuff. And then when you're on the road, this thing won't come flying open. So this thing's really nice. These are made out of ABS, not PVC, which was an upgrade from the previous year. So there's a lot of thought to this bad boy. If you're interested in making one, I'll put the 2.0 version in the description below. These are all my rods and reels. Got an impulse reel, which is, this is kind of new to my arsenal. I really like that. Always throwing the wacky worms. It's actually rigged, rigged up like a Nico. I was fishing, this is August right now. So I was fishing some jerk baits says yesterday because I was in a school of minnows that look just like that. Got a deep diving crank over here. Um, I have a 
poop bait. That's a depths cover scat. Coming around this side, got a peanut butter and jelly jig uh, for monster bass. Now this is nice, tungsten jig head. And I believe this is a KVD rodent. So this picked up last month, three of my largest bass, 21.25 and like two 19 inch bass, which are absolute monsters here in Ohio. And so this is kind of my go-to bait caster rig. It's an impulse, I believe seven, three medium power, fast action. And I have a Gamakatsu, this guy right here. This is the Yamatanuki. It looks like an upside down bowling pin. It's kind of ridiculous, but you put it on a five aught Gamakatsu hook and man, this thing has been slaying bass for me this past month and so that is why it's still hooked up so that's kind of what i'm throwing right now but that changes all the time all right one of the last diy mods is down here which is a keel guard guys make sure you do yourself a favor put one of these bad boys on and you can buy them they could be really expensive they could be like a hundred dollars or 250 dollars for the peel and stick ones this right here is a kydex keel guard i made for like 20 bucks and I'll throw the video for that in the description below. But I've had this one on all season with no issues. And then I've had one on my native Sarah Propel 10 for two years, no issues on the front. And I also had one on the back. So that's a popular video as well. One is actually put on with a type of tape. The other one is put on with a different adhesive. So if you're interested in learning about both of those, I will throw both of those links to the videos in the description below. So there you have it folks. If you have not watched part one of this series, I go through how to pick out a kayak, the kayak fishing gear guide basics, and kayak fishing safety measures. And part two is gonna walk you through some common beginner mistakes some kayak bass fishing tips and some things I wish I would have known earlier in the sport. So I'll throw part one over here, part two over here. Thanks you guys for watching. See you later.